Ma me vana se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV diye osi adam yopo. Felix. I'm also not enthused by the impromptu history lessons that Dr. Anani and the supporters of Anna Chimati want to force on us. I'm, I'm beginning to question the relevance of that lesson. But you see, what we are going to do in 2024 is not an acquisition of knowledge in history or the, the origins and genesis of the Nankabuzi Act tradition. That is all that is interested The MDP's history is quite well known. Every senior high school students who have studied uh, history should be able to tell you where the MPP stands in terms of its, its tradition and its, its history. So I'm not sure where that emerged from. This latest discussion on history has come from. I would have thought that Dr. Anani and other leading figures in MPP would make a strong case as to why the names will be taken between them. You see, the truth is that it doesn't matter who the MPP is. <laughs> the decay of <coughs> governmental putrefaction mm -hmm. in the Apu Fadu years has totally tarnished and besmirched the image of the MPP beyond repairs. There's absolutely no salvation for that political tradition within the context of the 24 elections. You know, when they have not had sufficient opportunity to govern, they used to live in a, a certain mythical structure. This had been erected as well. They created the impression that they had so much to offer, except that they have not had the opportunity to offer whatever it is that they had. So, up until us, to just about junk status, in fact, junk status, because of that, this government has told people, Ghanaians, including pensioners who have lent aid money that they cannot pay. So they've taken 87 billion dollars cities of money belonging to Ghanaians, people in the middle class, pensioners, 70 and 80 year olds, some of whom have dependents who are mentally retarded. Mm -hmm. Only last week I heard one of them threaten that she will join two of her nieces who are mentally challenged to strip naked in protest at the mistreatment that the government is meeting out to them. This government's failure or the refusal to pay them money is due them. So, 87 billion dollars is of money that Ghanaians, millions of Ghanaians depend on, and their dependents also depend on, has been expropriated by this government. That is the sum total of what President Abu Fabio and Mohamed have done to this country. Things are so bad that at one point, our currency was exchanging at 17 cities to a dollar. And this wreaked havoc on Ghanaian businesses. It tore businesses apart. Businesses collapsed. There was mass unemployment. Most people simply could not hold their businesses together anymore. Things got so bad that we went into hyperinflation. You went to the market in the morning and bought an item at a certain price, only to return the afternoon to find that the price has gone up. Inflation went to 54%. When this government inherited <coughs> power, we owed 120 billion Ghana cities. By the first quarter of this year, it had ballooned to over 650 billion Ghana cities. And the exchange rates movement alone had added over 140 billion Ghana cities to our debt. Look at 
at the rapid increases in the price of goods and services in this country. My brother was talking about untold hardships. What we we have faced under this government is unprecedented hardship, never seen before in our country's history. A total destruction. They they set out to demolish our economy and reduce it to rubble. Rubble. That is what they have done to this country. Today, after they are haughty, haughty, you know, criticizing the gains IMF programs, they are pumping their chest that they've entered an IMF program. And the horrible conditions under which Ghanaians have to live because of that IMF program is unprecedented. No IMF program that we've entered, not even in the early 80s, when we had all those natural disasters impacting our economy, did we have this sort of conditions? The debt problem that this government has created through deliberate recklessness has never happened in our history. <clears throat> On top of that, look at the corruption and sleaze. Deliberate waste of public funds. This is a government that decides that at a time when they cannot afford to print textbooks for four consecutive years, they will spend $58 million digging the most useless hole in world history in the center of Accra in the name of building a cathedral. They actually spent money to import a stone, a stone from Israel to lay foundations to build a cathedral. A totally needless edifice in the in light of our circumstances as a country. This is a, a government that cannot afford to feed secondary school children. Only two days ago, I saw a video of some secondary school children protesting at the lack of food. And then I saw a picture of food that is supposed to be given to senior high school students. That I know with the greatest respect to everybody listening, some dogs in some households today will reject. <laughs> this is what they have done to this country. <laughs> he was here talking about the size of cabinets. That Alajamanti believes in a small government. Yes. He gleefully served in the government that had 125 ministers. He gleefully served in the government that had. He did not have the decency and principle to even voice concern about the size of government. He defended it. Today he says that he believes in the small size. So when President Mama proposes to have 16 ministers, he says it is too large. Yet he gleefully served in a government that has 125 ministers. They have over 1,000 people working within the confines of the office of the president, as I speak to you. They have all manner of amorphous, totally useless agencies whose only purpose is to give succor to party people. That's all. So when you do this to a country, you systematically destroy a country like this. It doesn't matter who you bring as your flag there. You will be put out of power because you know what? The Kufu administration and the most number administration were put out of office for far less than this. Mr. Pat is here. Some of the things that we demonstrated against President Kufu over were nowhere near this disaster. And as a lot of you will see, you know, the Ghanaian electorate, they've they got a tortoise and plucked her from its back. What do you think they will do to check it? They got tortoise, tortoise, a tortoise. They had no hair. They plucked, they were able to pluck feathers from the tortoise's back. You think they are going to blink, booting out this government. <laughs> and so we have to waste time to discuss about 10 people who have shown interest in their flag wearer shows. I'm repeating, it doesn't matter who they present as their flag wearer. The Akufuadu Baumi administration has done sufficient damage to our country that will take decades to repair. For that reason, there is no way that the Ghanaian electorate will countenance them. When that same electorate has booted out governments for far less than this, you can check the, the state of the country in 2008, which caused the Kufa decision to lose power, or if like the MPP to lose power in 2008, because it was on the record of President Kufa. You can also check what the situation was in 2016 when this government won power. And just deduce for yourself what the electorate would do to this NPP government or this party come to meet in the Somehow, 
they turn their chest over confidently and say that oh, they will win because they think that Jimensa was on Asari and the latest rabid MPP propagandists that they put there as IT director can manipulate the electoral system for them. You see, Senna, when Ghanaians have voted for the government, there's nothing, there's no earthly force that would deny them that verdict. So the MPP must hear it and hear it. Look, again, it's about this year, and it's, it's important because in 2008, when then Kanita Pufado helmed the MPP into that election, they tried similar maneuvers. You recall that there was a day after the election, and that must have been 30th December 2008. Traders in Accra closed their shop at midday and fled the business district because the tensions then were papa. Because when Abu Fadou had lost the election, he was refusing to give up. He was engaged in all manner of shenanigans. Even then, they were still booted out of power. So that's what I want to do. Look, they can roll out the entire Ghana army to trample upon human beings like happened in the Tiananmen Square and down there. They will still be booted out of power. Because you see, the other Ghana is essentially reasonable. They give you the benefit of the doubt to govern. And when you govern in a manner that is satisfactory, they will need your mandate. That is the only thing that keeps a government or a party in power. Beyond that, you are gone. So what they're not thinking? That because they have packed state institutions with MPP lackeys and have completely destroyed the independence of agencies and organizations that hitherto should be independent, they are going to get a walk in the park. It is not going to happen. Because they could have done look forward to good governors. What they expect is that when they give you an economy, you manage it with prudence and common sense in the manner that is beneficial. But what has this government done? They have simply refused to do the things that are reasonable. In opposition, they were shouting from the rooftops about borrowing, claiming that we were borrowing recklessly. At the time, our total debt was 120 billion Ghana cities. It was basically half of our GDP. Half, just half of our GDP. At the time, our exchange rate was 4 CDs to a dollar. Inflation was 15.4%. Interest rates over around 25%. And yet, the MPP insisted that those indicators pointed to a situation that required a change in government. Today, they have lined up 10 people to waste their time and their ears. And they are telling us that when inflation has crossed 40%, the exchange rate has tripled. Interest rates are around 40%. Our debt is 15 billion. They should go and renew their mandate. Mm -hmm. The people you told that the situation in 2016, which is far better than now, <laughs> required a change in government. I have been told today that we sat a horrific, horrific destruction of our economy, the mandate of the party that has destroyed the economy should be renewed. What do you think the people of Ghana for? That why? They've not seen human beings before. They've not seen a man wearing round spectacles before. So they will go and renew your mandate after such a horrific performance. When you deliberately decide that you'll be reckless, you are giving power to govern the country and you decide that you will use that power recklessly in a manner that destroys a country. You are borrowing and you are told that, look, the way you are borrowing, it will lead to difficulties. You tell them that, no, there's more room for borrowing. Then you go and borrow yourself into a debt hole. You jump back government with your relatives and friends. You refuse to sanction anybody who misconducts himself or herself in government. You encourage corruption. You encourage deliberate wrongdoing. You, you, you destroy state institutions. You will pack our courts with MPP chieftains, electoral commission with MPP propagandists. You destroy every independent organization there is, so that all of them will have their aprons then tied to you. And when you finish, you come and request that your mandate to be renewed. And I have watched my brother put up a spirited defense of his candidate, Alan Chemantin. Of course, one can, cannot expect any less from you. 
But the point is that an Antimati has been part and parcel of this distraction. Look, when Dr. Baumia comically stood on platforms and recited the names of the supposed members of the Kuma community, an Antimati had a pride of place on that list. He was one of the people who was counted as a member of the solid economic management team. He cannot extricate himself from blame <laughs> and leave Baumia to hang because things have gone south. There is no idea that he is proposing now that he could not have been have brought on board to fix the situation we have. So what things did he relate to this level? He cannot jump out of the ship and pretend that he has some fresh ideas. He has no fresh ideas. If he did, we won't be here. As the accounts we say, he was one the man. If he had anything to prove, he would have demonstrated it as a member of the economic community. He claims that some factories are available. Look, to begin with, this government has not built a single factory. They have simply tagged along with individuals who have built some factories. In any event, who says that is the first other factories have been built in Ghana? I have been on your show and giving you a list of 140 factories. <laughs> That under the end between 2013 and 2016 sprang up. In fact, in our case, we put money into state factories. The Ghana Gas Company is easily one of the most profitable companies in Ghana today. Look, they are owed hundreds of millions of dollars and yet they are afloat. There is no company in this order will survive what Ghana Gas is going to do. You know why? Because they are essentially profitable. So they can afford to have that kind of debt owed to them and still make profit. Because everything they do is profitable. It cost us close to a billion dollars to do. And I am certain that that amount of money would have been paid on right now. Given the amount of money that has been made from that entity. You go to Amina. There's Amina fish possessing plant. There's another sugar factory, which his boss, Alan Chamantin, has delivered around and allowed to rot. Every day there's a new iteration of what they are going to do to that factory. There was a commercial shoe factory. They will build cement factory and others. This is only one state entity that they have put up. So what is this noise about factories? In any event, what was the sum total of the effect of those factories? Unemployment is at 13%, the highest in recent history. And how do those factories prevent us from going bankrupt as a country? So he has done factories and yet the country is bankrupt. What an irony. And because of this, all the contribution he has made to the destruction of this country and our economy should be ignored and it should be voted for. Is that for the rest? Is there, I have always wondered why people waste their time in these races. I don't know why Bwache, Jaco, Kwame, Japan, with the greater respect to them, I don't know what they are doing in the race, knowing fully where they are going nowhere. But as for Baumia, is he, he deserves special mention for the, the, the comical approach that he believes in. You see, if we were a self-respecting country, he would not even make the attempt to put himself up for election. Somebody like that will run, who will, will run away from any effort to put himself up as a candidate. And I'm sure on that score, my brother here agrees with me. Because he even does not believe in me. So he's supporting Alan Chamati. So I'm not sure he can put up any defense for him. Why would you? Why he's accusing his father of infidelity to the damn communist tradition. So it's just to the extent to which he will go to ensure that he doesn't come anywhere near their flag by assessment. But why? Why should we be insulted in that manner by the MPP? By, by, by their tolerance of Baumia anywhere near their presidential ticket? Was he not the one who went round creating the impression that he was the equivalency of economic management? He had all knowledge about economic management. Was he not the one? So if today our economy has collapsed and we are bankrupt, what business does he have on any presidential ticket? That ticket will stink to the highest levels. It is anathema. It's an aberration that should never happen. After such a horrific, and you know what? What is most excellent about him? Whenever the economy tanks, he doesn't even have the courage to put up a defense. That like, oh yes, I'm in charge. Things are going south, but I'm being ABCD to address it. He doesn't even have the courage. He runs away. He flees. You know, you can check your archives. You are a news organization as well. Check your archives and see. Whether <coughs> within the whole period that we're doing the debt exchange, we <coughs> have from here a word about that thing. Meanwhile, the debt exchange, and Mr. Bond has been around forever, is by far 
first. The most significant, the most significant economic decision that has the worst impact on the citizens ever taken by a government. Check your your news workers, all your news stories and facts, and see whether he uttered a single word about that activity. You can't take the seven billion this from Ghanaians who have lent you money because you say you can't pay. The head of the tournament team did not utter a single word, and the reason was simple: he was fleeing responsibility because he knows that if he mentions that, thing, people like myself will sit down and roast him. He didn't have the courage to even take criticism of Panama. He ran away and left the finance minister on his own. Meanwhile, any time there is a sign of some insignificant improvement in the economy, you see him waxing the record, grinning from year to year, seeking to create, take credit. So he is a wimp when it comes to taking responsibility for the things that go wrong with the economy. And yet he wants to be president. As Elijah Abiyo Hussein will say again, he cannot carry twigs, but he wants. He claims he can carry timber. You put twigs on his head, he sinks to the ground. Yet, he insists that he must add logs, timber, to his load. He has no respect for the people that he wants to lead. You lead an economy, and it goes into turmoil, a tailspin of unprecedented proportions. You completely run away. He finds the nearest rat hole to, to, to hide him. He can't even face up to you media men and answer questions on why we are where we are. He runs away completely, vanishes. And then when he sees that the coast is clear, he emerges from his rattle to put in yet more comical, comical interventions. The last time he was at Kumeu, doubling in comedy again. You see, the reason why I say that he does not respect the people he wants to meet is that, you see, a man in his position should reflect sobriety. You know, he should reflect sobriety, especially in a period like this. When your own mismanagement has led to this situation, what you do is to level up with the people. Take responsibility. At least lead the effort to inspire hope in the citizenry. He doesn't do that. And then when people are suffering, you've taken people's 87 billion. People are now for the first time in our history, pensioners have to picket the finance ministry on a weekly basis to demand that money that is not that they are asking for freebies or they are even asking for their pensions to be paid. Money that they have lent to government. Pensioners have to do that. And within that period. A vice president is able to mount a platform and tell us that a uh, guinea fowl flew to Burkina Faso. You see, that kind of conduct should be reserved for a crazed MPP serial caller. Okay, he can be forgiven. Uh, an MPP serial caller can be forgiven for that kind of talk because you don't expect much from him. Not the man whose mismanagement has led to this economic disaster. And the MPP wants to insult the intelligence of Daniels by presenting such a person on their ticket. I pray that you do. Because it will be a, a very interesting campaign. How a man who destroys an economy should be given an economy to manage will be very interesting. Today, they are working within the corridors of the IMF, begging any and everybody. Now, these days, it looks like anybody at all who goes to the president becomes the subject of begging to rescue an economy. If it is not the Chinese, it is the French, it is the Germans, any and everybody. About the only person that who has not begged to help fill the economy is perhaps the Togolese ambassador. Because everybody who goes to him, he is begging for solutions to our economy, economic problems. And yet the man who has superintended this disaster, <coughs> somebody has inflation of 15.4%. You say you've never heard of it before. And so the person should be voted out. Yet you want to be voted for after you, you give us 54% inflation. That brings us close to what is happening in Zimbabwe. Four cities to a dollar is too much for you. And so you insist that that management team should be booted out. Yet you want us to accept a situation where at some point in November last year, 2017, today is around 12 cities to a dollar. Three times what they think to eat. So what possible justification will Baumia be offering to the people of this country to elect him? What, what is he going to run? What is he going to run? You said, tell me, I'm, I'm trying to fathom. At the very least, my brother here is saying that Allah has built factories. Even if we were to accept that, for purpose of argument, at least he has offered some. What exactly is Bamiya? What, what platform is Bamiya running on? He should tell me. What? What is he going to tell us? That what, today, if you go to a passport office, you can sit in your house and guess what you call it? Um, 
other passport forms. So because I will vote for you. Look, I can sit in my house and order watch it. Watch it. It's been going on. There's a there's a, a beans joint somewhere around Alaju. You can sit in your house and order beans. Their own platform. They've done it themselves. They pay. They will bring you to your house to your address. It is a joke that after all the problems we have, the vice president wants us to shift into some discussion about digitalization. And the only reason why he would do that for somebody who was so talkative in 2016 about the economy is that he has still, even the attempt to run away from the economy and talk about something else, is an admission of failure. And as far as I know, failures are not promoted. So now when you fail in class, you repeat. You are not promoted. So, in some, there is not one person in that the MPP can bring that will salvage their fortunes. As I said, it is irredeemable for them. But it serves them right that when they were caution the gains in letting an apple fight, they will not listen. They say a dream is so that others are chanting now. It's what an apple brought. It says they believe it. Of course, now you believe it. So we caution the gains in letting. They didn't mind us, elected him, Ghanaians accepted him, and the consequences are what we are living with. So he has done such damage to that brand called the MPP that there's nobody on earth now who can resurrect it. And surely the, the people that they are bringing cannot possibly have the capacity to resurrect the tactic image of the MPP at this moment. If you put the economy aside, look at their government structure. Look at the corruption. Only last week, a fight he made between the energy minister and the board chairman of the GMPC. They are accusing themselves of corruption. Say now, we are sitting behind the house. The people in the house would say that they are thieves. And yet, they, they want to bring us thieves to elect. They are the ones saying it. I'm not saying I'm not saying The energy minister is accusing the board chairman of GMPC, an MPP store, the former chairman, national chairman of the MPP, of corruption and underhand dealing. And we see it all the time. Look, look at the, the, the myriad of corruption cases that President Kufado has suffered. He will not sanction anybody who does any wrong in his party. Look at his human rights record. A supposed human rights lawyer is now arresting people for criticizing him harshly. Somebody is standing to have allegedly insulting him. That's a human rights campaigner for you. That's a human rights campaigner for you. Some journalists allege that his wife and the second lady are involved in some property transaction. They are standing to a human rights campaigner for you. Look at the size of government and this dogged refusal to do anything about it. What was the justification for having 125 ministers? Family has said to seven. He has over a thousand, thousand, two hundred or so staff. When you put the civil servants and the political appointees alone, number over 340 under this administration. For what? So, so my brother here indeed has a tall mountain to climb. <laughs> he has a tall mountain to climb because the kind of the produce that they are taking to the market is as, is appealing or acceptable to the to the to the, to the customer that they intend to get. It is not the tomatoes they are sending is rotten. The cassava they are sending has so much wheat in it that it's not it's not fit to prepare in it. So that for four hours. The corn too has two micro holes in it. The beans is infested with insects. So there's really nothing that we take to the market that will be appealing. And in the next one and a half years, you see the IMF program that they have, and what they are sent to, is going to be so harsh that I wonder exactly what they are going to tell them. You know, if they have gone to the IMF earlier, of course, we all have our difficulties with the IMF. But at the very least, as far back as 2021, First quarter, it was clear that they needed to go. And then because of Baumier's propaganda, the lies, the lies that he told in 2016, they couldn't go. Because once again, they were scared that people like myself and others who were competing. So they thought that it was better to double the propaganda than to fix our economic problems front. So they waited till we had to carry in an ambulance to die. And now what is the effect? Taxes upon taxes. The same man. Who stood on platforms and berated the NBC for imposing fewer taxes than they have done? It's now leading the charge to impose more taxes. So they have a tall mountain to climb. I'm sure that there will be plenty 
an opportunity going for us to discuss the NTP prime minister. And like I said, please brace yourself for acrimony with nations. And if, if there's not a prime minister, I'm not a prime minister. Thank you very much. <laughs> These are opening remarks. In fact, we are just about entering into the MPP race, and this is what Phyllis has to say. I'm wondering what he will say when the race itself starts. Uh, but I'm also wondering who is the tomatoes, who is the cassava, the bees, which one is the bees. Take the volunteer, please. I didn't pick. My name is Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV, dear. I see them. You